Um, today I'm going to talk about how I found the best job ever without submitting a resume. Have you ever had the feeling that you could easily impress or seal the deal if you could just get your resume in front of the right people? If you could just get FaceTime with the right folks, you could easily seal the deal. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret today. Even talent and recruiting professionals struggle with the same feelings. This is my story, the story of how I ignored what everyone else was telling me, I took the reins, and I networked my way to the best job ever. I was working at a burgeoning startup in New York City, directing all talent initiatives for the firm. I was a team of one, working 12 to 15 hour days, accomplishing a ton and sleeping very little. I had zero resources, no budget, and an employee turnover problem that was so intense that I was dealing with competing priorities. Fill new roles or backfill for the employees who were leaving in droves. At the same time, after putting off my honeymoon for more than a year because I was so committed to my job, my husband urged, um, my husband forced me to take a two-week two vacation to explore the spellbinding history of Turkey. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably all rolling your eyes, here we go, another eat, pray, love knockoff. <laughs> but I assure you, while there was a ton of eating, maybe some loving, I mean it was my honeymoon, this trip was not about praying. It was about figuring out the roadmap to bagging my best job ever. Sometimes you need some space and the open road to gain some clarity and perspective. So as we started down Turkey's turquoise coast, I found myself confronting the issue that my current lifestyle was unsustainable and frankly it was becoming unsatisfying. The long hours, the inability to unplug, the lack of a team to help me accomplish the company's lofty goals. How did I get here? I was feeling stuck, I lost my passion, but with all the hours that I worked, I really didn't have time to be pounding on jo online job marketplaces sending out resumes, and researching roles that would be a good fit for me. <clears throat> As I allowed the anxiety to take over me, I was reminded of another time in my life where I had the same sense of feeling anxiety and the fear of the unknown. I was entering my sophomore year of high school, and as an expatriate living in Indonesia for most of my childhood and adolescence, I was used to people coming and going. It was an incredibly transient community, where people were being relocated constantly and probably more often than they stayed. Still, I had somehow managed to keep my same core friend group. And then it happened. Nearly every single one of my friends was leaving. I spent a lot of time feeling really bad for myself. Why me? How was I going to make, my, make new friends? I was a 14-year-old in a world of cliques and besties. How was I ever gonna have a social life again? My mom, the realist, had no problem telling me to snap out of, out of it. Get a hold of yourself, she'd say. It's time to rebuild your network. When you're living in a developing country with extensive poverty, you find yourself putting your foot in your mouth more often than not. And she consistently reminded me that my silly teenage issues really carried no weight at all, and that I had nothing to lose. Try to connect. Just force yourself to get out there and network, she'd say. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was 14, I wasn't my mom's biggest fan, but she conveyed her point with so much gusto that I totally bought in. It started with me initiating chats with my classmates to approaching folks that I hadn't spoken to since elementary school, and there weren't a lot of those, but I, it was working. And then finally, I started walking up to people I didn't even know, saying, uh, all my friends moved this year. Yep, I, I have no friends. Um, <laughs> would it be cool if I ate lunch with you? Shockingly, every person obliged. Part of that may have been the fact that I started the talk with, yep, I have no friends. <laughs> but what I realized is all you have to do is ask. As I laid on Turkey's Istuzu Beach, surrounded by loggerhead turtle nests, I was reminded of confronting the same issue three more times 
As I moved from place to place, I was forced to rebuild my social network three more times. And as much as I hated doing it, I forced myself to simply approach people and ask. In an article for the McKinsey Quarterly entitled Center Centered Leadership, How Talented Women Thrive, the authors say people with strong networks and good mentors enjoy more promotions, higher pay, and greater career satisfaction. They also noted that the key to forging these connections is by making it personal, in the sense that others will, will get along with you more easily if they see your human side. And then it happened. Eureka, what if I applied the same skill, and let me be clear, this is a skill, it's something that you develop with practice, to my work life. <clears throat> I know, it's, um, it's pretty shocking, right? Like, I had spent my entire career networking on behalf of all of my employers, but I had never used it to propel my own individual career aspirations. Furiously, I put pen to paper, thinking about the non-negotiables for my next role. One, excellent C-level management that understood opportunity cost. Two, a product that I was passionate about. Three, a culture that I could get behind and that valued work-life balance. And four, a meaty role that, where I could build something from the ground up. Next, I made a list of one, people that I had met in the startup world. Two, candidates that I had helped over the years. Three, other recruiting professionals that I needed to reconnect with. I stalked people, aka strangers, on LinkedIn whose career trajectories I admired and then I very simply asked them out for coffee. Every person said yes. I went into all of my meetings with a simple plan of action and came very prepared. One, ask specific questions about their careers. This is an opportunity for you to learn. Two, tell a succinct, very positive story and then ask for advice. And three, ask if, if there's anyone I should be whose brain I could pick. I stroked as many egos as I could, I told my story multiple times, and then I asked each person if they knew anyone who could be a resource for me. In the span of two weeks, I had perfected my personal pitch, met with four venture capitalist firms, and had gotten intros to VP and C-level individuals at Twilio, Foursquare, Meetup Group, and Kurtosis, among many others. I'd literally meet anyone who'd be willing to share knowledge and listen to my story. And what became abundantly clear is that, what, is that people respond to honesty. And once you get past the fear of asking, doors begin to open, and the world and universe becomes much smaller. Jean Clemens, a lecturer at Warden who teaches management communication, says, women don't ask. Men ask for things, whether it's jobs, raises, projects, engagements, two to three times more than women. According to Clemens, women are afraid that asking, will, that asking for what they want will make them appear negative, aggressive, or pushy. Well, I'm here to tell you that closed mouths do not get fed. If you want something, you have to ask for it. And while it's not particularly easy, people, all people, are more accessible now than ever before. Within weeks of my marathon of meetings, I had been recommended for three different positions at very reputable tech firms in, the, in New York City. I interviewed with each organization, but because I had done so much networking on the front end, it actually felt more like a brain share than an interview. And guess what happened? I got three solid, competitive offers from every single company. That's right. Three offers, zero resumes sent. For the first time in my 12-year career, I was the one picking where I wanted to work next, something that was pretty much unfathomable even a month prior. <clears throat> Finally, I pulled the trigger and joined Carolate, a company that was revolutionizing the data analytics and marketing space for the visual web. I have C-level management uh, that is transparent and supportive a culture that I'm beyond proud of, an incredibly forward product that has me drinking the Kool-Aid on a daily basis, and the most fulfilling role that I've ever had. 
We all entered this room today to learn something new. So even if you're entirely content in your current role, I urge you to take this incredible opportunity to reach out and introduce yourself to the women around you. While I'm not saying it's easy, there's no networking without the work, remember that all you have to do is ask. You never know. The relationships that you initiate today may be the key to finding your best job ever. <laughs>